want to stay organized, so we will be making folders along the way to organize all of our models into them. You should be on the home page of Onshape. Let's start with a folder. So, to make a folder, you want to press the blue Create button, then Folder. We are working in Section 1, so let's name this folder Section 1. You should see that a folder is created on your home page. To enter that folder, just double click on it, and now you're inside. In this folder is where we're going to be making all of our primitive shapes. The first primitive shape that we're going to make is a cube. To do that, we need a document. Again, press the blue Create button, and then Document. Once again, we want to make sure our name is correct, so we're going to call this cube, because it's exactly what we're going to make. Name it, and then click Create Public Document. Now that you have your document, you're ready to start modeling. In Onshape, every model starts with sketches. You sketch 2D shapes and then use tools to make that sketch 3D. Every sketch has to be on a plane or face. You can see where you're looking in 3D space by looking at the cube, the orientation cube in the top right hand corner. So right now, we are looking at the corner of the front. So we're looking down from that front corner. We want to make a sketch now. So, click the sketch button, which is under the name of the document, and then it's going to ask you for a plane. We want to use the top plane. If you go to the center of the workspace and hover over top, you can see that the entire plane becomes outlined. Click on it, and now you see that that top plane went into our little information box here. To make drawing easier, we want to view directly from the top plane. To do so, click on top, in the orientation cube and you'll be brought to view directly from the top. Now that we're viewing the top plane, we can draw our square. A square is the basic shape that makes up a cube, so 2D to 3D. To make a square, we want to choose the corner rectangle tool. Click on the tool to activate it. And to draw this type of rectangle, you're just going to click once anywhere in your workspace, drag, and then click again to form the actual rectangle. You're still inside the tool though, so if you clicked and dragged again, you're going to make another square. You're going to continue to make squares or whatever shape or tool you're on until you click the escape button on your keyboard. Once you click escape, you're no longer in the tool and you're no longer doing whatever that tool does. So now that we have our basic shape, we want to make sure that it's a perfect square. To do so, we need to use the dimension tool. The dimension tool looks like a slanted line with arrows on either end of it. If you hover over it, it'll say dimension. Click on it to activate the tool. Then you want to click on one of the horizontal lines. Drag out, click again, and it's going to let you put a number. We're going to just use a whole number. Let's use four. So you're going to click on four and so the top and bottom horizontal lines or sides of this square are now four inches long. We want to do the same to the left and right side. So click on one of the left or right side, does not matter. Click, drag out, and type in four to match. The reason we don't have to do the other two sides is because Using the square tool, all the lines are already parallel to each other, perpendicular, and equal. So the top and bottom are equal, and then the left and right are equal. Now that we have our completed square, we can make a cube. To exit sketch mode, you want to click on the green check mark button. We completed our square, and now we're ready to extrude our square into a cube. Now that we have our square, we want to go ahead and extrude that into a cube. To do so, we want to make sure that our square is in our field of view, like in our workspace. So if you're accidentally zoomed in so you, where you can't see the whole square, on your mouse you want to just use the wheel, the center wheel, and just roll and zoom out. 
if you hold down the right button on your mouse, you're going to rotate. And you can see that our square only exists on the top plane. So let's go ahead and rotate it so we can see our square from an angle. To use the extrude tool, we want to click on it. So the extrude tool is right next to the sketch button. Again, if you hover over it, it says extrude. And now what it's going to, going to ask you to do is click on the face and sketch regions to extrude. You want to make sure that that box is blue where it says faces and sketch regions to extrude. And then let's just click on our square. You can see now that we see a preview of what it will look like. Since we want a cube, let's go ahead and match it to the dimension we made our side. So we want to do four inches. When we're done saying what depth we want, we can click the green check mark button. And now we have ourselves a cube. You can see that this cube is a part. So on the left hand side in the parts section, in the sidebar, you can see that part one appears. If you hover over part one and then click the eyeball, you're going to hide it. Click on the eyeball again to show. In the feature tree section, you can see that we have our sketch and our extrude feature. So let's say we accidentally made a mistake in our sketch. We can click on our sketch, right click, and re-edit that sketch to be different dimensions. So let's say instead of four, I wanted to make it three. I can do that. So if you double click on the numbers, three, you can change it to whatever you want it to be. Click on the green check mark button to say you're done. And now you have a new cube, but wait, now it's too tall. It's not a cube, it's a rectangular prism. So we also have to change our extrude again. Right click on the extrude feature in the feature tree, click edit, and change that number from four to three. Green check mark means you're done. And now we have a perfect cube, but instead of four, it's three. The next model we are gonna make is a cylinder. To do so, we need a whole new document. To get back to our main page, we want to click on the on shape logo up in the top left hand corner. It'll take us directly back to our section one folder. If not, just make sure you double click on section one and you see that our cube is already here. Let's create a new document for our cylinder. Blue create button, document, rename it cylinder. And then click on create public document. The cylinder is very similar to the cube, except to make a cylinder, instead of using a square, we use a circle. So let's go ahead and create a sketch on the top plane again. Click on the sketch button and then the top plane. We want to make sure that we're looking from the top view. So we go to our orientation cube in the top right hand corner and click on top. Now, instead of the square tool, we're going to use the circle tool. The circle tool is right next to the square tool, so click on it to activate it. Go into your work area and click once, drag, and click again. Again, if you keep on clicking and dragging, you're just going to make a bunch of circles. To get out of the tool, click on the escape button on your keyboard. We want to make sure that our circle has a dimension. So we're going to click on the dimension tool. Then our circle drag out. And this is going to be the diameter. We can go ahead and use four. The diameter of our circle is now four inches. To get out of the dimension tool, click escape. We have our circle and now we're ready to extrude. Click the green check mark button to make sure that we're done with our sketch. And then using your mouse, hold down the right click 
and drag around to rotate your view so that we're looking at our circle that only exists on the top plane from an angle. Click on the extrude button again. And then, just like we did with our square, we're going to click on our circle. We have to change the number again to see how tall we want our cylinder to be. We can just match it again to what we made the diameter, so 4 inches. Click on the green check mark button, and now you have a completed cylinder. Just like before, you can go to the parts section, hover over part 1, which is our cylinder, click the eyeball to hide it, eyeball again to show. You can also go back to the feature tree and then right click on the sketch 1 or extrude 1 to change that feature. Green check mark to make sure you're done with anything you want to change. If you want to see just the cylinder and not the planes that are there, so we can see the front, right, and top plane are still there, in the feature tree, we can hover over top, click the eyeball, front, click the eyeball, right, click the eyeball, and it all disappears. So now we only see our cylinder. Now that our cylinder is done, let's go on and make a sphere. Just like we did before, we need to go back to the main page of Onshape and create a new document in our Section 1 folder. Click on the Onshape button in the top left-hand corner. Make sure you're in the Section 1 folder. Click on the blue Create button, then Document, and rename this document Sphere. Create your public document, and now we're ready to make a sphere. Unlike the cube and cylinder, where it's just a square that was extruded and a circle that was extruded, we need to revolve a half circle. To do so, we need to start with a sketch. Click the sketch button, and this time, instead of the top plane, we want the front plane. Click on the front plane, and then go to our orientation cube, and this time, click on front so that we're looking at our space from the front. We need another circle, so click on the circle tool, click anywhere, drag to get our circle, and then escape to get out of that tool. Let's make this circle a dimension of four again. So dimension tool, click on your circle, drag out, click again, and then type in 4. Now that we have our dimension as 4, we want to split this circle in half. To do this, we need a line. So we need to go to our line tool. The line tool is on the left side of the square tool. And to click on it, activate it, and then we need to cut our circle directly in half. You see our blue circle here? has a blue dot in the center. That is the center of the circle. If you hover over the center of the circle, that dot or point, you can see that it turns orange. If you slowly move your mouse up to the top of the circle, you see that this orange dotted line follows. We want to make sure this orange line follows all the way to the top, and you can see that the outline, the blue, turns orange. We want to click to have our first point of our line, then drag straight down, and again, you should see that we have this orange dotted line appear over our line. Drag all the way down to the bottom and click again to make our line. If you don't click escape, again, you're just going to keep drawing lines. So click escape. And now we've cut our circle into two sides. And you can see this, that when we hover over one half of the circle, only that half gets highlighted orange. Now that we have our half circle, we can click the check mark button. And we're done. Let's rotate around again so we can see our circle from an angle. 
and instead of using the extrude button, we want to use the revolve button. The revolve tool, what it does, it takes a profile, which is our half circle, and revolves it, so it spins it around an axis. And our axis is this line that we made straight through our circle. So the revolve tool is right next to the extrude tool. Again, if you hover over it, it says revolve. Click to activate it. And we first want to click our ha one half of the circle. It doesn't matter which one. Then we can see that in our section box, we see that the first blue square says face of sketch one. That is our half circle. But we see that the revolve axis box turned red. We want to make that active by clicking on it. It should highlight blue. And then we want to just click on that center line. You can see that we have a sphere preview show up. Click the green check mark to be done. Hide our planes. And we have a sphere. And if you rotate around it, you see that it kind of looks the same everywhere because it's a sphere, so it's supposed to. Next up is a cone. Just like before, we'll make a new document for it. Create your new document and name it Cone. To create a cone, it's just like the sphere. We're going to take not a half circle, but a half triangle and rotate it around a single axis. Let's make another sketch. Click on the sketch button on the front plane and then front on our orientation cube so that we're looking at it from the front and let's draw a triangle. So click on the line tool, click anywhere to start your line, drag out, click again to end that one side of the triangle, drag out again, and then do the same thing again for that last side. So you're just drawing a triangle like you would on paper, instead you're doing it on the computer. We need to cut this triangle in half, so again we need the line tool. Click to activate it, and we want to start at the top point of our triangle. It's highlighted orange, perfect. Click on it, drag straight down. You should see that dotted orange line up here to the bottom line, and click again. These two sides are not equal, but that's okay. We only want one half anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Now that we're done with our um, triangle cut in half, Click on the check mark button. Rotate around so that we can see it from a angle. Click on the revolve button. And again, the first thing we want to do with the first highlighted blue box is click on one half of our triangle. It does not matter which you can choose. Then we want to click on the red box where it says revolve axis so it turns blue and then click that center line we made to cut our triangle in half. And as you can see we have a preview of our cone here. Click on the green check mark button, hide our planes, and now we have a cone. And a cone is made from a triangle being revolved around a line. The next shape we're going to make is a torus. It looks just like a donut. Make a new document for your torus. Torus is spelled T-O-R-U-S. Similarly to the cone and sphere, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to revolve a shape, a 2D shape, our sketch, around an axis. So, let's make another sketch on the front plane, and then make sure that we are viewing from the front. A torus is a little different from the other shapes, because instead of cutting a 2D shape in half, instead of cutting a circle or a triangle in half, we actually need a full circle for this. So, we need to click on the circle tool, make a circle anywhere, you can go ahead and dimension it if you want. 
I'm gonna just go ahead and make it one inch in diameter. And then we need a line. We always need a line. That line is our axis at which we revolve around or spin the shape around. To make a torus, we need to make this line not in the circle, but away from it. So it can be any distance away you can choose. And you're just going to click once and drag down for a straight vertical line. Again, you should see the orange dots, um, dotted line appear. Click two times to make your line, escape to get out of the tool, and now we're done with our sketch. Click the green check mark button. Rotate so we see it from an angle, and now we want our revolve tool. Just like before, we want to click on the shape that we want to revolve around the axis. Our shape is the circle we made, and our axis is that line we made. And now you can see a torus form. Click the green check mark button to be done. Hide our planes, and boom, we have a torus. A torus is just a donut, a ring, whatever you want to call it. A hula hoop, I don't know. That's This is it. The nice thing about a torus is if you don't like how big the center gap is, you can actually change that. So if you right click on your sketch in the feature tree, edit, go back to the front view, and if you move this straight line closer to the circle, green check mark button, you can see that the center hole got smaller. Same thing if you made the circle bigger. So instead of a 1 inch diameter, if we made a 2 inch diameter. Click the green check mark button. It made the donut thicker. Or the torus thicker. The last shape we're going to make is called a pyramid. Let's go ahead and make a new document for our pyramid. A pyramid this time is completely different from anything else we've done already. So to start, let's go ahead and make a sketch on the top plane. View from the top plane, and we want a square. So let's go ahead and create a square. Click on the rectangle tool to activate it, click once in your work area, drag, click again escape to get out of that tool and then dimension one of the horizontal sides to be equal and then one of our vertical lines to be equal so i made it four again i made the dimensions four inches once you've dimensioned your numbers go ahead and click the check mark button rotate so we can view at an angle and this time, instead of choosing extrude or revolve, we actually need to make another plane. So we have our default planes of top, front, and right. But we actually can make another plane off of a surface or an existing plane, which is exactly what we're going to do. So the plane tool is right here. It looks like a square kind of at a diagonal with a small square in the top right hand corner it looks like a backwards flag i guess you could say hover over it and you're going to see that it says plane click on it to activate and it needs an entity to go off of so we want the top plane we can see that plane one appears here if you rotate at an angle you can see that our plane one is above our top plane. We want to make it four inches above our top plane or whatever dimension you made the sides of your square. So if you made the sides of your square three, make this offset distance three inches away from your top plane. Blue check mark button to be done. Or sorry.
green check mark button to be done. And now we want to do another sketch on this brand new plane that we created. So we want to hover over plane one, it outlines orange, click on it, and now we want to view from the top. The reason we want to view from the top is because plane one is offset from the top. Click, and now we're looking at plane one and top. You can kind of see it right here where the words plane one and top are like overlapping each other, but this is what we want to see. We need to create a point in the center of the square that we just created. To do this, we need to project our square that we made in sketch one onto plane one, onto our sketch two. To do this, we need to use the convert button. Use, which is project and convert. Now we are looking at plane one from the top view. We need to make a point at the center of our square. To do this, we need to get our square onto the sketch, which is on plane one. To do this, we need to use the use project convert tool. Click on it, and then click on all four sides of that square we just made. You can see now we see a darker black square escape to get out of our square. Now we just need to find the center of the square. There are a couple ways to do this, but I like to just draw a line from one corner diagonally to the other corner. So just go ahead and create two lines and divide your square into four triangles. The center point is where these two lines cross each other. To make a point, you want to use the point tool. Click on the point tool, and then hover over the place where the two lines intersect. Click, and you should see that you've made a point directly in the middle of where those two lines cross. Now we're done. We can click the check mark button. Now we are ready to loft our square into that point and create a pyramid. So we want to use the loft tool. What the loft tool does is it takes one section or profile and brings it up to the to another section or profile. So the first one we want is the square. And we want to bring that square up and onto the point. Green check mark. Hide all of our planes, including plane one. And we have our pyramid. You now should have created all of your primitive shapes. You made a cube, cylinder, sphere, cone, torus, and pyramid. These are primitive shapes because if you look at anything in your household, you can always break it down into some of these primitive shapes. For example, if you look at a chair, a chair is just made up of cubes, rectangular prisms, and sometimes even like cylinders.